Placental abruption is the premature separation of all or even just a part of the placenta from the uterine wall, resulting in hemorrhage or bleeding. This usually happens after 20 weeks of gestation and affects about 1% of pregnancies worldwide. Now, the placenta forms where the embryo attaches to the uterine wall, and it's a unique organ because it develops from both the mom and the fetus, and its job is to permit gas and nutrient exchange between them. The word placenta literally means flat cake, so picture it as a cake with two layers, the maternal layer and the fetal layer. The maternal layer, the decidua basalis, is literally a flattened out bag of blood with uterine arteries delivering blood in and uterine veins pulling blood out. But unlike other parts of the circulatory system where blood stays within narrow blood vessels, the decidua basalis is a huge pool of blood. The fetal layer of the placenta, on the other hand, is called the chorion, which is a tissue that has finger-like projections called chorionic villi, which have tiny fetal arterioles and venules. These villi push into the decidua basalis, like tiny fingers reaching into a warm pool of oxygen-rich maternal blood. Gases and nutrients move back and forth between the decidua basalis and the fetal veins by diffusing through the tissue layer of the thin chorionic villi. Placental abruption happens when there's a separation of the uterine wall and the decidua basalis. This separation is usually caused by degeneration of the uterine arteries that supply blood to the placenta, typically from chronic problems like smoking or hypertension. Those diseased vessels rupture, causing hemorrhage and separation of the placenta. If the separation is near the margin of the placenta, it can cause vaginal bleeding. But if the separation is more central, there might be a pocket of blood that stays concealed within the decidua basalis and the uterine wall. Placental abruption can be classified as either partial or complete, depending on the degree of separation from the uterine wall. As well as apparent or concealed, depending on whether vaginal bleeding is seen or not. Risk factors for placental abruption include acute events like blunt trauma from a car crash, fall, or domestic violence. This can happen because the placenta is less elastic than the uterus, and the strong forces from traumatic events like these can cause the placenta to shear away from the uterine wall. Also, use of certain drugs are risk factors, like cocaine and methamphetamine, because these cause significant vasoconstriction of the placental blood vessels, as well as an abrupt increase in blood pressure, increasing the risk of an abruption. Other risk factors include multiparity or multiple pregnancies, and a maternal age over 35 years old. Interestingly, the strongest factor for placental abruption is having had a previous abruption. Placental abruption is often accompanied by pain in the area of the abruption, and the uterus might tense up and become rigid, as the strong muscular layer contracts to clamp down on the uterine vessels to reduce the bleeding. Given that placental abruption leads to a serious loss of blood from large vessels, it's considered an emergency. Maternal complications include hypovolemic shock, Sheehan syndrome, which is a type of perinatal pituitary necrosis that results from hypovolemia, as well as renal failure. Also, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, is also a possible complication, since the decidua basalis layer is also rich in thromboplastin so an abruption causes the release of large quantities of thromboplastin, which causes widespread clotting. Fetal complications include intrauterine hypoxia and asphyxia, because the fetus is no longer receiving adequate placental perfusion. And finally, there's an increased risk of premature birth. Generally, a diagnosis is made based on imaging. Typically, an ultrasound will show a retroplacental collection of blood, also, blood or blood-stained amniotic fluid might come from the vagina. Treatment depends heavily on the physiologic status of both the mother and the fetus, as well as the gestational age of the fetus. The main approach is to use intravenous fluids and blood products to support the circulating volume and prevent a coagulation disorder from causing problems. If the mother and fetus are stable and the pregnancy is not far enough along, then it might be ideal to monitor the pregnancy closely while the fetus develops. 
Alternatively, if the hemorrhage is severe, or if there's evidence of fetal compromise, then an emergency cesarean section might be needed. All right, as a quick recap, placental abruption is the premature separation of all or part of a normally implanted placenta from the uterine wall, which results in hemorrhage. Complications depend on the degree of hemorrhage and how far along the pregnancy has advanced. And treatment focuses on hemodynamic support until a safe delivery is possible. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.